So entrepreneurs and landowners, you are here on the show to pitch. And particularly for the landowners, we went through the requirements of the show, which was to be able to assess the true ownership of the properties. But apart from ownership, there are a number of things that developers look for, particularly for joint venture projects. So our next mentor will help you define and refine the requirements that you will be submitting for the due diligence process of our developers here on the final pitch. And he is waiting for you at the conference room right now. Good afternoon. I'm Hari Dilipane, President and Co-Founder of Conveyance Realty Services. Good afternoon. I'm Julius De La Cruz. I'm the Co-Founder and the Vice President for Sales and Marketing for Conveyance Realty Services, Inc. Okay, so before our topic, no, I'd like to give a brief background about our company, Conveyance Realty. We're a private and a professional company that specializes in land title transfer. We're a team of licensed professionals, liaison officers, technical experts, and we provide the full range of land title services. No? I'll be discussing about title due diligence. Title due diligence is the process that involves research and analysis of documents to validate the accuracy of property information and the legality of ownership. A land title is an evidence of the right of interest of the owner to possession and to the use of property. As a seller, one of your obligation is to make sure that the property, the ownership, can be transferred smoothly to the buyer. We have two types of land titles. One is the original, which is at the register of deeds. The other is the owner's copy, which is what you have. It is the most important document, no? in a real estate transaction. Without a clean land title, you cannot sell or you cannot transfer the ownership of a property. With due diligence, no, you can verify the property information on the two titles, the owner's copy and the register of deeds copy, the original copy, if it's correct. No? And as early as now, you can already prevent unforeseen or legal problems in the future if you do your due diligence now. You see the real value of the property. And then the other one lets you determine the method that is required to cure a defective title. If the problem is defective or there's a problem, you cannot transfer the ownership of the property. So there are three types of due diligence, technical, the legal, and physical. So for the technical, this is where you do title verification. You have to check and you have to compare the data and information on the two titles. All information in the owner's copy and the original copy should be identical. You also need to get a certified copy of the tax declaration. This is the record of the property at the assessor's office. It also contains the ownership data, the property information, and the real property tax payment. The next step is you get a lot plan from a licensed geodetic engineer. So you would know the shape of your property. When you plot the technical description, you also have to check if the area coincides with the area in the title. Now we will discuss the legal due diligence. When we talk about legal due diligence, so we talk about history of the ownership. We also check with the possible yens or encumbrances or third-party claims. We also verify the potential hindrances. And we also check the existence of the two copies of the titles. We also need to check for pending cases with judicial courts no? involving the property. No? So that's part of the legal due diligence. Yeah, baka may existing case, yun nga, there's a notice of levy. No? You have to check with the local courts as well. Let's now go to the last part, which is the physical. So what do you do? So first, you go to the assessor's office. You secure a tax map. Okay, what is a tax map? It will indicate the location of the property in that municipality or the city. And then the next one, you have to verify the actual use of the property. So for example, you have a commercial property. You have to check with the local government or the zoning what are the restrictions or the limitations no, of this property. So you have to check the ordinances and regulations pertaining to the property. The relocation survey will tell you the actual boundaries of the property and the exact location based on the title. In summary, no, I'd like to emphasize the importance of um, doing the due diligence. No? Even if you're not the buyer, you're the seller. You want to make it easy for the buyer to buy your property. So you have to make sure the legal documents, especially the title, is clean and free from any encumbrances. Okay. okay. 
Now we're gonna go to the portion as to how to pitch your property effectively. So you have to clear the path in the investor's mind. And in the first 30 seconds, if you fail to catch the attention of the person you're talking to for your pitch, it's gone. It's out the window. Forget about it. I just wanna let you know these things, the key is preparation. Mistakes are very, very expensive after being committed during a pitch because you've already lost the investor. The mistake costs nothing if you commit it before the pitch. You have to rehearse your pitch, you have to do it over and over again such that to a certain level, it's very natural. The first thing that you have to know is location. How many access points are there to your property? What are the locators around your property? What's the impact of that to your property? These are highly important for pitching a property. So you have to be prepared as to answering these things. So road network, accessibility, exits are very, very, very important because the property is quite useless if you can't really get to it. Physical features of the property, it's very important that you know how to pitch it to its advantage. If you have a small frontage or a large frontage, it's going to affect the price and the lease rate. So for example, if you're selling a property and you have a wide frontage, oh, that's prime property. And if you're seated along a main road, oh, that's prime area. We can actually lease it for a higher price compared to the, to the properties uh, at the higher floors. Simple as that. What are the market values in the area? How are you gonna compete? How are you gonna sell it to him? And how much is gonna be the markup of the developer? There are so many things you have to be thinking about. So, relativity, third point. You have to understand the relation of your property to the surrounding areas, and most especially for the purpose of those people who are pitching non-properties, the competitor. You have to understand what prices the other similar properties are selling at and what your advantage is. Fourth, negotiation skills in benefit pitching. You have to understand that you are actually pitching a benefit. You have to understand how to close, sometimes even without the visuals. You have to be able to actually convey the idea to them. If you can have a pitch, making sure that it's conveyed properly to your, your client, then no problem. Last, it's knowing your numbers. You have to know your figures. If you walk in there with an asking price, you have to understand what your last price is and your walk away price. In terms of selling the property, you have to know your taxes, what taxes your investor is gonna go through. You have to understand what the net amount would be for him. You have to be able to compute the ROI. More importantly, what's the ROT? Return on time invested. Okay, thank you everyone for listening to us this afternoon and we hope that you learned a lot. And we wish you good luck in your pitches and go get them all.